Please welcome Ed Boyden, MIT. Hi, I'm Ed Boyden, Y.E. Vitam Professor of Neurotechnology at MIT and a Howard Hughes Medical Institute investigator. Understanding and curing diseases is, in the end, about seeing the building blocks of life and characterizing them and how they go wrong. Much attention has been focused on seeing and characterizing the genome and mutations in the genome. But it's the products of the genome, such as proteins, that actually do much of the business of life and whose signals go wrong in disease states. Just as next-gen DNA sequencing has revolutionized the analysis of the genome, Lithic Biotechnologies, a spin-out from our group at MIT, is aiming to develop next-gen protein sequencing. For the first time, it will be possible to sequence and identify individual proteins in a high-fidelity, massively parallel fashion. The applications are virtually endless, helping create new vaccines and powerful therapies, helping diagnose difficult diseases, helping analyze incurable conditions like Alzheimer's for new targets. The unmet need is incredible, and the technology you're about to hear about is perfectly aimed at solving. Breaking the wall to next-generation protein sequencing, Joshua Yang, Glyphic Biotechnologies. DNA sequencing marked a new revolution, a new era in the biomedical sciences. In fact, the reason we're sitting here today together is because of DNA sequencing. The COVID-19 vaccine would not have been developed without it. And today, I'm here to tell you about the next revolution in the biomedical sciences, protein sequencing. Imagine if we could diagnose Alzheimer's decades in advance of symptoms, predict and prevent heart attacks before they occur, create personalized precision cancer vaccines for patients of all backgrounds, and engineer novel life-saving antibody therapies more easily. We are limited in our ability to do this today because proteomic analysis tools themselves are limited. Tools today are insensitive and not powerful enough to measure low abundance proteins. Tools today are low throughput in how many types and quantity of proteins that are measurable. Tools today have complex workflows with little lab to lab consistency that require highly skilled operators and putting them out of reach of many research laboratories. And while some tools may provide adequate sensitivity, throughput, or ease, none provide all simultaneously. Here at Glyphic, we're here to change that. Our solution is a complete protein sequencing platform, one that is ultra-high throughput, measuring billions versus thousands of proteins. Is that the single molecule sensitivity, the highest sensitivity possible, enabling measurement of the lowest abundance proteins? And it's a plug-and-play instrument. If you can pipette, you can sequence proteins. And how does this technology work? This technology works, if anyone has heard of DNA sequencing, sequencing by synthesis, this is the reverse. Sequencing by degradation. Here you can see a glass slide where there will be billions of proteins attached to the slide. This chemical reaction I'm about to show you is occurring to the billions of proteins simultaneously, but we will focus on a single protein for the depiction. In this pink square, you can see the protein attached at one end to the glass slide. We've developed a novel chemistry, click P, that conjugates to the end of this protein. This click P chemistry has a number of properties. The first is that it enables this thing to locally tether to a nearby site on the glass slide. So now this single protein is attached at both the end terminus and the C terminus. Next, this chemistry allows us to cause an end terminal cleavage event to occur, where that last amino acid that has been tethered is now liberated, freed from the rest of the protein. So that protein chain is now one amino acid less, but that single amino acid is still attached to the glass slide. And now we can use one of our 20 high spe highly specific, high affinity antibodies. There are 20 of them because there are 20 amino acids that proteins are comprised of. And these antibodies will fluoresce a specific color depending on which amino acid it is. And then we can wash away that amino acid and repeat the cycle anew. If you go through this entire cycle iteratively for the entire protein, you will have sequenced that protein for the billions of proteins that are on this glass slide. This is how you are able to do next generation protein sequencing. We believe this technology will enable a rapid expansion of the proteomics market. Currently, the global proteomics market is $25 billion, growing at a 12% CAGR. 
But this is just the immediate market opportunity. We believe that a revolutionary technology such as protein sequencing would enable a long-term transformation of healthcare by proteomics, enabling applications in precision medicine, clinical diagnostics, and therapeutics development. We not only plan to penetrate this growth and market expansion opportunity, but create it ourselves. And we plan to enter this market with a business model approach that is proven. We have we'll target four customer segments of biotech, biopharma, academic institutions, and CROs, and have revenue streams consisting of service provider offering sequencing as a service, and then also on the razor and razor blade model, selling instruments, sequencing instruments to these customers with sales of integrated systems, high margin consumables, instrument service plans, and training. We know this business model is going to work. This is the approach taken by research tools giants to date, such as <coughs> Illumina, who after five years after introducing their first DNA sequencing product, had achieved over 300 million in revenue and are now the genomics market leader. 10X Genomics followed a similar model, five years after introducing their first product, achieved almost 250 million in revenue and are now the single cell market leader. There is currently no competitor with a working next generation protein sequencer, and so we will be this next proteomics market leader, achieving hundreds of millions in revenue five years after launching our product. So thank you for your time. So now, now we meet on stage. We've been yes. meeting all over the place this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions? Yes, we have one here in the first row from the jury. What type of reader do you need and how much space is gonna take on a, on a normal bench? Yes. So we are using a detection system actually very similar to current next generation DNA sequencing based on fluorescent microscopy imaging. And so it will take up about a similar amount of space as an existing DNA sequencer and thus would be able to fit on your bench top. Second question was from here in the third row, please. Yes, how are you dealing with modifications of amino acids? In fact, I think that is one of the parts of our technology that is great because our technology can detect all of these post-translational modifications. In fact, we have developed those 20 antibodies against those 20 amino acids. To detect these post-translational modifications, we just need to develop antibodies against each of the post-translational modifications that would be of interest to a researcher. Okay, we have a question here on the right. Yeah, the really right. amazing talk and, and technology. Uh, can you a little bit uh, talk about the, the first functionalization that you need in order to monovalently functionalize the protein onto the substrate? Yes, yeah, so I th on the last slide, we have the protein attached at the C-terminal end of the protein. And so we are using C-terminal spe specific chemistries that enable the proteins to be attached on, from the C-terminus, the carboxylic acid end, onto the surface of the glass slide. Next question here. So I understand you're selling this as a research tool, but if this, if this truly works, um, what does this open up for you? If you were gonna turn this into a business that in, it was enabled by this technology that was, that was actually going after a commercial market, what would you do besides a research tool? Yes, I think we as a company would pursue therapeutics development of our own. You can imagine that right now, antibody development is very difficult because you have to immunize animals, then take out their B cells, try to figure out which B cells produce the antibody of interest and then develop the antibody. It's a lot of work, it takes months or if not years. Our protein sequencing platform could sequence pr antibodies directly from the blood, thus giving you sequences of antibodies that you already know will bind your target of interest, thus opening up numerous areas for us to develop our own antibody therapies and candidates and our own asset pipeline. Okay, we still have time for a couple of questions. Exceptional opportunity here, no, no? Online, Roman, do we have any, no? Online, yeah, okay. Yes, <laughs> you're not done yet. <laughs> so so you, you talked about the advantage of, of having developed antibodies which would detect even post-translational uh, modifications. But looking back at my practical time, I mean, there were always problems with antibodies detecting phosphorylation and stuff like that. Uh, so, so are your antibodies really good, specific enough? Have, have, have you that in hand? Yes. Can, can you deliver that uh, realistically? Yeah, so one of the problems with using antibodies to detecting amino acids and post-translational modifications is that you can imagine amino proteins, antibodies, one of them, are very large, and amino acids are very small. 
And so did he use this giant protein to try to bind to a single amino acid or post translational modification? Generally, it has not worked that well. In fact, the beauty of our approach is that because we are separating that amino acid or post translational modification from the rest of the protein and linking it with our novel chemical ClickP, we are actually creating a larger surface area for our antibodies to bind specifically and with high affinity. So that's how, this is this, how we are getting this high affinity, high specificity interaction. And so we've demonstrated already that we can develop these antibodies that are highly specific and high affinity and demonstrated that they do indeed bind these modified amino acids. Okay, well, that was it for the question rounds. Thank you so much. Thank you. Joshua Young.